Hello, morning na. Ano na ngayon, December 24. I failed to vlog last night. Kasi I came very late uh, from an event at the Manila Hotel. Sponsored by the uh, Family Peace Association for Asia Pacific, Pacific Region. And it, the program was quite long and so I was not able to definitely do my blog immediately but i have not uh changed yet so i have to set uh, to sit down before my computer and do this blog so that i can i can continuously supply you my subscriber su subscribers with uh, uh yung talagang sunod sunod na mga blogs ko tungkol sa mga babae sa buhay ni dr Serisal. Uh, my dear subscribers, as we commemorate on December 30, the 125th death anniversary of Dr. Oserizal, of his martyrdom, uh, as we remember him, uh, it is also very timely for us to remember a woman, a woman who, by the virtue of having been associated with Dr. Oserizal, became also a part of our history. Of the history of our nation. Uh, you know, when Dr. Ruserizal wrote his uh, last literary piece, which became uh, a classic in literature, not only in the Philippines, but uh, international, uh, in the international scene, no? uh, I, uh, that particular poem had no title. Right? When, when he uh, placed that, inside an oil lamp given to him by the Taberas, which he used in his prison cell in Port Santiago. Uh, it was uh, in a very small piece of paper, and uh, there it was not titled, untitled, but given the title, Mi Ultimo Adios, later on. Uh, he In this poem, he was professing his undying, his love for his country, for the people he loved, and a woman he referred to as me dulce extranjera, my sweet stranger, no? And so, uh, it would show that Rizal also had an undying love for this woman. Isang tunay na pag-ibig din na naramdaman ni Dr. Jose Rizal. But uh, you should also know that the wonder, the 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 uh, the, the sweet stranger or Dulce Extranjera, a uh, title or description of Rizal of Josephine, was not or were or was not the only title he gave her, uh, but he also uh, referred to him to her rather as his wandering swallow. What is a swallow? A swallow is a bird, a small, sweet, flying bird known to the Tagalogs as Langay Langayan and to the Spaniards as Golondrina. And uh, uh, this, the wandering swallow of Rizal was on his mind on the eve of his execution. So, uh, nakikita mo rito uh, na talagang malaki ang naging pagmamahal ni Rizal sa kanyang wandering swallow ka sa kanyang Josephine Bracken why why was Josephine Bracken referred to as a wandering swallow we have to study the life of Josephine this woman who was very much maligned who was very much understood by many people, including the family of Dr. Jose Rizal, the historians, the biographers of Dr. Jose Rizal. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, two of his biograph biographers rather, are referred to or called, uh, uh, called uh, Josephine Bracken as uh, a woman with a past. And who were these biographers of Dr. Jose Rizal, who I would say, were unfair to Josephine Bracken. They, they, they were uh, Wences Lauretana and uh, Rafael Palma. Mga unfair sila sa isang babaeng kagaya ni Josephine Bracken because they referred to her as a woman with a past. Eh bakit ba nagkas, naging wandering swallow si Josephine Bracken? When did she start wandering? 
She started at a very young age wandering. She was born in Hong Kong on August 9, 1876. So siya ay labing limang taon ang kabataan. Ka, ang labing limang taon ang tanda ni Jose Rizal kay Josephine nang sila ay magkakilala sa dapitan. Uh, naipapagabot niya sana yung kanyang tatay-tatayan si Joseph si si uh, George Dofer no uh, so he was born she was born in Hong Kong and one month pa lang siya pinapanganak na matay ang nanay niya because of too much loss of blood uh, the mother was uh, was uh, named Elizabeth Jane McBride and when she died the father James uh, James Bracken could not take care of another child because uh, siya at saka yung namatay niyang asawa na isang iris ay mayroon nang ita meron na silang ano eh meron na silang uh, uh, apat na anak so magiging panlima na si uh, si ano papanlima na si Josephine Bracken so he, she, could, she could no longer take care of them because he was an army man and he was uh, assigned from different to different places so he decided to give up Josephine for adoption and he had uh, decided to give her up for adoption to George Dofer who was married at that time to Leopoldine Bracken of Leopoldine Dofer and despite the fact that uh, uh, Josephine was an adopted child uh, together with another girl Sarah uh, Leopoldin showed them a true love of a mother kahit hindi sila nanggaling sa kanyang sinapupunan. And uh, Josephine actually grew up until age 7 na masaya. Masaya siya. And one of the conditions nga pala before I forgot, I forget, ay uh, yung ang gusto ni, ni, ni James Bracken ni James Bracken bibigay niya si Do Josephine kay Toffer pero siya ay pag-aaralin in a Catholic school. So, Josephine was enrolled in Canossian School. Kaya ang upbringing niya is Catholic. And, uh, when, ano, uh, unfortunately, for Josephine, uh, Leopoldine died of heart attack when she was seven years old. So, that was the first uh, uh, pain that Josephine uh, experience the death of Leopoldine Bracken. Uh, George Stopper took another wife because uh, he, he could not be on his own. So he took another wife. And this second wife was also good to Josephine. And uh, the second wife, however, who was, uh, who was, uh, uh, by itong kanyang second wife na ito was uh, a Macau Portuguese no? a Macau Portuguese so woman uh, by the name of Anne Ann, uh, Conhe no? Anne Conhe uh, also was very good to Josephine and to Sarah they went to Japan they went on a tour to Japan as a family but when they returned to Hong Kong Anne became very sickly and died again. So another pain for Josephine. And again, uh, Topper could not stand alive or could not live a life without a woman. So he took another wife for the third time. Mga lalaki talaga. Uh, minsan uh, maraming, marami talagang lalaki ang hindi makatagal ng biudo. Nag-aasawa ka agad. No? <laughs> Pasensya na kayo mga kalalaki yan. Uh, pero maraming babae ang pwedeng mabuhay ng walang asawa hanggang sa huling sandali ng kanilang buhay. So, itong ngayon, itong babaeng ito, yung third wife na kinuha ni, ni, ni Topher, ang nagbigay ng malaking problema kay Josephine. Why and how ay malalaman natin sa susunod kong vlog tungkol kay Josephine Bracken. So, antok na antok na ako talaga. Gusto ko nang matulog. No? Alauna na, mag-aalas dos na. So, goodbye para sa ngayon. Bye for now. Tomorrow, I will blog again uh, about Josephine Bracken. And bye, bye, bye. I'm so sleepy already, but I I, I made my promise uh, sa inyo na hindi ako papalya. So, i-upload ko ito ngayon, mapapanood nyo. And then, tomorrow, uh, immediately, kasi 24 na ngayon ng December, alas dos na, ay mapapanood nyo pa rin ulit-ulit book uh, 
<laughs> ngayong araw na to, no? medyo late na nga lang itong aking second episode naman tungkol kay Josephine Bracken. Mga tatlong episode siguro itong kay Josephine Bracken kasi mahaba ang kanyang kasaysayan. Makulay ang kanyang buhay. So, kasing kulay siguro ng aking buhay. So, bye-bye for now. And I'll see you again very, very uh, soon. Kasi ilang oras lang ako magpapahinga. Magbablog ako ulit. So, Merry Christmas! Keep safe, everyone! Alright, this is your Lola Maria asking you to please subscribe to my channel, Just Me, Amalia. Bye-bye again. Merry Christmas again. Thank you, thank you, thank you.